Hey what's up guys my name is Thrual Modi and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial and in this video I'm gonna show you how to bring back details lost in overexposed photographs usually this things happens with landscapes so I'm gonna show you this example on a landscape photograph so let's get started so in last week's video I showed you how to create a really white vampire looking skin and if you want to watch that tutorial you can go to my channel or you can find that link in the description so to start this tutorial first of all I'm gonna create a new document so I'm just gonna select and copy this image and then create a new document and I'm gonna paste it so this is not a really high resolution image but still usable so to start first of all create uh, this is not the adjustment layer I, I wish they had this thing but they don't so I'm just gonna duplicate by pressing Ctrl J so we can have a backup copy now go to image adjustment and shadows and highlights this thing is not available in adjustment layers so it bugs me a little but whatever and then as you can see all the details that are lost they are in highlights so I'm gonna recover those from the highlights so you can see suddenly a sky appears out of nowhere and that's freaking amazing I love this feature and as you can see it also helps to recover this highlights from this stone here and as you can see we lost pretty good amount of contrast in the image but don't worry about that we will look after that in further process so this far it's going pretty good you can adjust the slider the way you want so uh, in the color correction I usually don't like to do that thing inside my like shadows and highlights panel I like to do that after so adjusting sliders a bit it can take a little time just make sure you don't lose too much contrast and this seems fine to me I might just add a little bit of color or maybe not and recover full amount of details from the highlights so this is the first step and hit ok so at this point you have recovered all the details but it doesn't look that attractive so let's go back and see other processes so let me shut down all these layers so this is the first as you can see it's a bit different from this one but you can take your time and find perfect so here I added a little bit of highlight on the stone to create this highlight it's really easy thing to do go back to your layers create a new adjustment layer and select curves and in the curves boost up highlights a little bit not too much you don't have to worry about this part just focus on the main stone because that's the main subject of the image um, and if you want to download this image this image is from deventart.com and it's totally free the link is in the description you can download it from there and select your brush oh, sorry the mask and press ctrl i or you can also fill in the black color both does the same thing and then I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is white and opacity is 100% and then I'm gonna paint on this stone so as you can see it highlights it a bit and brings more attention to it so you can make it like super funky but I would not recommend going for that and okay so let's go back and see what we can do so now it's a normal HDR that I applied to bring back those details in the stones as you can see and also uh, we can also use in the sky since I have masked it out but let me show you so first of all you have to create a snapshot so for that press ctrl alt shift and E so it will create a JPG inside Photoshop as you can see here and then go to image adjustment and HDR where are you here HDR toning now it will tell you to flatten the document so for temporary use press yes I will show you a trick to help it and now I don't want this amount of saturation I just want the details so if you turn it on and off you can see it boosts uh, details a bit so you can increase the radius and strength a bit you can go super high strength your personal choice so as you can see it helps to bring back that contrast that we lost in the shadows and highlights so play with it until you think it looks good enough for your taste so it looks fine to me and I'm just gonna hit OK now the 
the document is flattened but what you can do is press ctrl A so it will select your image and then press ctrl C so it will copy it and then start pressing ctrl Z and then ctrl alt Z so basically we are undoing it until you are here so we are back without the HDR now create a new layer and press ctrl V so we have that HDR layer back and our document is also the same so this trick can be really helpful because HDR flattens the image and that can be really painful to work with sometimes. Now let's go and see another step. So this is the vibrance one and for the vibrance it just helps to boost the colors. I usually don't like using saturation to boost the colors because it will make the overall image really strong but the vibrance will fill in the colors in the area that it needs not the every color so I will go with like 80 or maybe full hundred percent and then I will select my mask select my brush and make sure this time it's black color because I want to hide some parts and then decrease the opacity maybe like to 50 percent and then paint in the grass because it's super strong and I don't want it that like that much so as you can see here it helps to bring that colors back in the image and then it's a bit different but you get the idea how to do the process and then it's a curves to add some further contrast in the image so basically create a new adjustment layers and select curves and then increase your highlights a little bit not too strong and then decrease the shadows a bit so it will pump the image like it has really good contrast so play with it until it fits into your taste that's the thing about landscape editing some people like it really funky and cool some like to make it like realistic so it depends on every person so as you can see here it boosts the contrast in the image you can also always like go back this is the good thing about adjustment layers you can always go back and adjust the things the way you want so this is looking fine to me so this far it's looking pretty good and as you can see here we have a stronger image and this is lighter but don't worry about that you can always go back and change the things now this is one really cool step this is the same thing actually that I did with the stone but this time I did with the previous stones actually the stones that are far behind so we can also bring some focus into them so as always create a new curves boost in the highlights a bit select your mask press ctrl I or you can also fill in the black color and then select your brush and this time make sure opacity is 100% and quickly paint with white color in all these stones to bring back those highlights it's really cool ways and also I love landscape editing because you don't have to worry about like too much you can go real crazy and the output can be really good so this looks fine to me you can always go back and I don't need to tell it again so I have paint like really bad right here I have painted like really bad <laughs> so take your time and paint carefully don't screw it up so this far we have recovered a lot of data in the image and it looks really great so select it and this is the sharpening layer so I'm gonna go back here and do the same thing create a blank layer and then press ctrl alt shift and E so it will create a snapshot and then desaturate the image so image adjustment and desaturate here then go to filter other and high pass this is the high pass sharpening this is like many people know it's really popular so you have to make sure that you don't use too much radius otherwise it will look like really really high contrasty so make sure it's really low you can see the example here and hit ok so this might not look as you can see here some details and now change this blend mode to hard light so it doesn't look any different but if you turn it on and off you can see ridiculous amount of details coming back now the image is not really high resolution so it can be a little bit of problem but it's ok and then let's go back and this time the noise reduction so when you recover this ridiculous amount of data one thing is obvious that you will have a little bit of noise or sometimes too much 
but in this case we are lucky and we don't have too much noise so I'm going to show you how to reduce that so press ctrl alt shift e again so it will create another snapshot and then go to filter noise and reduce noise and in the reduce noise uh, I usually like to work with advanced so I can go into every channel and change it so this time it's a blue one so make sure the strength is 10 and details are 0 it's looking like painting but don't worry about that so if I turn it on and off you can see it reduces the noise and hit OK now apply a layer mask manually and then press ctrl I to invert it and then with a white brush paint only inside the sky because the noise in the stones are not that bad but in the sky uh, it can be really helpful and also looks like really smooth but if you find it really smooth you can always turn down opacity and make it look realistic so this looks fine to me and now let's go back and create the selective color layer and it will help to make that sky super blue and you can I can also do one thing like create another adjustment layers go to vibrance and make it first a bit more blue and then I'm gonna press ctrl I and then only paint in the sky so we can have those really good blues so one additional step it can happen so don't worry about it and now I'm gonna go to selective colors and in the selective colors we are gonna play with only yellows and blue because those are the colors we can see in the image so first of all let's start with the blues I'm gonna add some cyan and then I'm gonna add some blue if you decrease the yellow it will add the blue as you can see here and gonna do the same thing with the cyan add the cyans and then add the blue so as you can see here it's like super funky so I can go back and decrease it a little bit and then let's go to yellows and in the yellow I'm gonna increase yellows a bit so we can have that really good colors and decrease the blues so you can go like super red and create a totally different image personal choice so don't worry about that so this is the start image and this is the original image it's like really freaking amazing changes with Photoshop I really love the software and then the final step or maybe only one step left this is like creating simple vignette there are many plenty of ways to create it so I like to go with gradients so I'm gonna select a gradient and in the gradient I'm gonna go a black to transparent gradient and hit OK and then I'm gonna make it radial and in the radial if it looks something like this just reverse it and increase the scale a bit so we can have pretty good amount of like okay why is it looking really different okay maybe I have to reverse it nope the scale is way too much so I can decrease it a bit so this looks fine to me okay way too much oh my god you are becoming pain in the gradient so I'm gonna put it on soft lights as you can see here ridiculously sh dark so I'm gonna decrease the opacity a bit so we can have a good amount of enough amount of vignetting so it looks better and then the final step and swear I swear to you this is going to end now so add a little bit of brightness not too much because we don't wanna make it overexposed otherwise that will be like really good irony and then add slight amount of contrast so this is finally done and as always goodbye take care and have some fun with Photoshop and yes don't forget to subscribe that button is really awesome press that <laughs> goodbye